We can sign it. Anybody else? Eager. Eager. Gung ho. Gung ho. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Eager. Uh, and then you got energetic. Mm -hmm. You got enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got all of that. And so what God is really looking for, what Paul is telling us that God is looking for, he's not looking for somebody that does not, or somebody that has to be prodded mm -hmm. to do his work. Okay, one thing that we have to understand is God called us. And we say God called us, we have to understand, first of all, God has equipped us. Okay, the next thing is God has authorized us. He's given us the authority to do what he's called us to do. And if he's done all of that, he sees something in us that we have the desire, that we have the energy, we have the enthusiasm, and that we are capable of of doing it. The one thing that God does not do is make a mistake placing somebody somewhere that they should not be. Okay? So that's what he's looking for. Somebody energetic. Somebody that's enthusiastic. Somebody that's going to be ready to go. Okay? That's the first word. Zealous. Okay, he has another word in there, deeds. What is deeds? No work, no action. Okay, your actions. Your works is what you do. Okay, so God is looking for somebody that's enthusiastic, energetic, willing to do Good, not bad, but good deeds. Mm -hmm. Deeds that are going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Deeds that are going to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Deeds that are going to be encouraging, mm -hmm. okay? Uplifting, not those deeds that are going to discourage somebody, uh, turn them around, uh, leave them, leave, uh, have them leave them here with their head hung out, but good deeds. Okay? And so as we come together, as we come together Sunday after Sunday, okay, and we encounter those who uh, maybe for the first or second time has showed up here and um, are looking, searching. They, they realize they need help. They realize they need to change the direction in their life. And they're looking for that place that has the energy and the enthusiasm to put forth good deeds. Somebody that's going to meet them at the door and instead of judging them on the way they look, the way they smell, the way they talk, the way they act, somebody that's going to let them know in spite of you're welcome here. Mm -hmm. We want to do what we can to help you in spite of. Okay? Somebody that is zealous of good works. Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking for. That's what Paul is wants to convey to us today. Okay, so we have two people in our lesson that we're dealing with today. Paul and Titus, mm -hmm. and being that unseen one, God. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we all know about Paul. We know a great deal about Paul. Okay? So we're not going to spend time rehashing what we know about Paul. But what do we know about Titus? Mm -hmm. Young minister under Paul. Okay, young minister under Paul. What else? Okay, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna call nobody on you this morning. I see the brain cells start to smoke. <laughs> Titus was a Gentile. Okay? And so it lets us know, or allows us to see, 
and especially during that time there, uh, that God uses anybody. Now, what was Paul's special calling? Apostle to the Gentiles. Apostle to the Gentiles. And if God called him to be apostle to the Gentiles and he uh, works that effort to get them saved, why not use one? Okay? And so at Paul, we know, was that Jew. But here we have Titus, the Gentile, who is going to be able to relate even more so than Paul to the Gentiles. Now you see, you see uh, Paul as this Jew, and he's going to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles hear him with all this fiery preaching and teaching that he's doing. But one thing sets us apart. Paul, you're a Jew. Okay? But here, God takes away that idea of thought from them. I got somebody that can identify with y'all. He's using another Gentile. Yeah. And so we have this brother Titus, this young Titus, under the direction of Paul. Okay? And then in the part uh, of our lesson, uh, Titus 1, 1 through 3, and then... To 11 through 15, it does not state it, but you got to read just a little bit further, a couple, ver couple verses further in one, uh, like down to five, uh, and it states that Paul was leaving Titus there. Okay, that's what he was doing. He was setting up Paul, uh, Titus, getting him prepared, taught and everything, and he was going to leave him there while he went on. And Titus' responsibility was to get the church there ready. He was to preach, he was to teach, and get them ready and full of the knowledge of God. Okay? And so we need to understand, we need to understand that a church set up in the name of God has to be taught and preached God. Okay? You can't come with your own uh, ideology. You can't come with all of these current events. You got to come with the gospel. That is the only thing that's going to bring about the change. That's the only thing that's going to bring about salvation. That's the only thing that's going to make them uh, more like Christ. Okay? And so that was Titus's responsibility. Okay? He had to get that church online with God. Okay? So zealous of good works, of good deeds or works, um, he starts off in this um, first chapter, in those first three verses, he starts out as he does in many of his letters, Paul, a servant of God. A servant. And I know we've read it a number of times in some of his letters, and we just glaze over that. Because we think that there's more important stuff coming after um, his introduction. But the introduction is just as important. Mm -hmm. He says, Paul, a servant of God. Okay? One, it lets us know that Paul is not out here doing this on his own. Okay? He's not doing it on his own. He's not doing it under his own power. He's not doing it under his own authority, but under God's. Okay? A servant. A servant. What he's doing, he's doing it under the direction of God. 
Nobody else. Simply God. And it, 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 show, it shows us something else here. And we have to look at it. He said, a servant of God. Before Paul met the Lord on the road to Damascus, Saul was a sinner. He was a sinner. And he was a servant to sin. Okay? Now he thought he was going around doing the right thing by persecuting the church of God. The saints of God. Okay? Uh, that group called the way, that if he found any of the way that he would, uh, he had the authority from the other unsaved folks that he was working for, he had their authority, their authority to arrest them and bring them bound so that they might be tried. Paul was a servant of sin. And it is telling us that just as he was a committed servant of sin, now he is a committed servant to God. Okay? And what loyalties he had serving sin, he now has loyalty serving God. Okay? Takes us back to uh, the Gospels. No man can serve two masters. Okay? But a lot of uh, folks in the church today, they trying their best to prove it wrong. But nobody can serve two masters. Amen. One or two things are going to happen. A number of things are going to happen. If you're serving two masters, one master going to get mad because you're giving the other master too much time. Okay. And then one of the other things that's going to happen, you're going to run yourself crazy trying to please both of them. You cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. So Paul he says here, Paul, a servant of God, okay, He's committed to doing solely God's will. And then the next thing that gives him a, his authority, an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle. I'm a student. I've been called. I'm under his direction. I'm not out here preaching my own gospel. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay, so let's ask a question. What is the gospel? We hear it all the time. What is the gospel? That's true, it's God's word. Good news. Okay? It's the good news of the birth death, the, the birth, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the coming again of Jesus Christ. The good news. That's the gospel. All of that. Okay? Good news that he was born. Had he not been born, we're not here. Mm. We're not sitting in here talking about what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Okay? The good news of his birth, had he not died. Had he not died, we're still not here. Mm -hmm. Talking about the sacrifice that he made on our behalf while we were yet sinners, yeah. he died yeah. for us. Okay? Buried in that borrowed tomb. He had to be buried because the, the miracle had to happen for the stone to be rolled away in order for the resurrection to happen. 
So you have the burial and the resurrection. If neither one of those happen, again, we are not here talking about the good news. Okay? And then the last part, which ought to get everybody excited. He's coming back. He's coming back again. And, and, and what is he coming back for? Church without <laughs> That's right. You want to make it personal? Yeah, yeah me. me. <laughs> yeah, but he's coming back for that church without a spot or a wrinkle. That's the church. He's not coming back for Mount Zion. He's not coming back for Ebenezer. He's not coming back for New Hope. He's not coming back for First Baptist. He's coming back for his bride. That universal church. Mm -hmm. That's what he's coming back for. Okay? So all of that is the good news. He, he, he has the authority. He is an apostle of Jesus Christ. According to the faith of God's elect and uh, the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Okay? Acknowledging the truth which is after godliness, acknowledging the truth, okay? Truth. What do we know to be the truth? Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth. The truth. Jesus is truth. Acknowledging the truth. Acknowledging Jesus. Okay? Acknowledging Jesus. Now, let me let me time out and, and say this, Cody. <clears throat> you all have only heard me preach uh, a few times. But you haven't had heard me teach. Okay? Now, the one thing I like when I teach is I like interaction. Okay? I like interaction. I like I like feedback. You know, y'all just sitting here looking at me. <laughs> we're listening. We're listening. And uh, we're looking at you. We're listening. Okay, I I, I want your feedback too. <laughs> I'm gonna say it back to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Jesus is the truth. Okay, and if you know Jesus, you know truth. Acknowledging that Jesus is the Son of God, mm -hmm. the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Okay, acknowledging that truth. Okay, and then he has that other word in there, godliness. What is godliness? Some. Some, some define it as piety. So if you say piety, what's piety? Godliness. Piety. Okay? Um, the in hope of eternal life. In hope of eternal life. Why are we going through all that we're going through in the name of Jesus Christ? Why are we suffering as we do uh, for the name of Jesus Christ? If there is no guarantee of some reward when it's finished. Okay. <clears throat> Just to come to Jesus. Just to be known as a believer. And there is nothing to look forward to. Why would you do it? Okay? So God helped us out. 
He didn't want us, he didn't want us to think that way. Okay? So what he did, uh, he, 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 he stated it in the Old Testament to the children of Israel, I think one time in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, if he told the children of Israel, if you be my children, I will be your God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he stated what he wanted them to do as his children, and he stated what he would do as their God. Okay? And so now, coming to Jesus Christ, okay, being born again, that I am your God. I am your Father. You are now heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And so you get to uh, partake of uh, those uh, Rewards or promises. promises. You get to partake of those promises. And one of those promises he speaks of right here in this lesson is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life. That once you leave or we leave here, once, once it's been <clears throat> said over us finally, as Christ said to his father, it is finished. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Mm -hmm. And that preacher st stands over you and says, from ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and it's done. Mm -hmm. When you have reached that point, God says, you're not finished. Mm -hmm. Now you get to come live with me. That's a promise mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. A promise. Mm -hmm. And God does not break his promises. Mm -hmm. And God does not lie. Right. Yeah. Now, eternal life. Um, give me What I should look forward to. Something of what I should look forward to in eternal life. Living with him forever. Okay, living with him forever. What else? Joy. Joy. Eternal joy. What else? Like I said, was praise. 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 Yes. Praise. Yes. All. All day long. Praise. What else? Adoration. Okay, adoration. What else? What else? Peace. Peace. No more sickness. No more sickness. No more pain. No more pain. Uh, you ever lay down at night uh, feeling pretty good yeah. and woke up the next morning <laughs> and something brand new done hit you and you <laughs> pain. Yeah, or, or that pain that just won't leave you alone. Okay. <clears throat> Eternal life with God is going to take away all of that and bring in all of that which is good. Amen. Amen. No, no more pills. And the pills don't make me well. Amen. They don't make me well. They just try and help me, my body stay on track where it's supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. You listen to all these new medicines coming out and just listening to the side effects. Oh, man. No, just let me stay where I am. If it's going to do all of that. But eternal life gives us a life that is free of all of that and enjoined with Jesus Christ in all of those <clears throat> things. The joy, the peace, okay? No more sorrow, no more tears. 
None of that. Songwriter said, always holly, holly, never lose our hair. All of that. Okay? So that's the promise of eternal life. Okay? And when we see that, whenever we see that in the Bible, we can't just glaze over that. It ought to cause us to meditate on what he's really talking about when he's saying eternal life. Eternal joy. We don't have to worry about the devil coming up in there trying to uh, 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 mess with us no more. No more temptation before us. Okay? After all the struggle that we've gone through, <clears throat> when we get there, we got a crown. We got a crown that signifies that we made it. We got, a, we got a long white robe to put on that lets us know we made it to a life of purity now. I got some brand new shoes. You know, them Giorgios and them Stacys, they do all right, but man, if they hit the wrong bunion, it's going to cause a problem. But I got some golden slippers that are fitted just right. You know what else I got? That I don't have to pay taxes on. And I ain't living in one right now. I got a mansion. That's right, got a mansion. And he's getting it ready for me. Okay? That's all a part of eternal life. Okay, and so our, our first example and best example of one that is being zealous of good works is God. Is God. Him knowing who we are, how we are, what we are. What we're thinking, what we're doing, what we're plotting. In spite of all of that, God has enthusiastically prepared for us eternal life. Amen. 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 Energetically. God didn't shortchange it at any point. Look, if he gave us the best he had in his son Jesus to die for a wretch like me, why would he shortchange me on what he's got up in heaven waiting for me? That, that just don't make good sense, do it? <laughs> okay, so we have eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Did y'all see that? Y'all look at that. Which God promised. When did he promise it? Not when he created the world. Not after we got here. But he promised before now, who did he promise it to? He made that promise to himself. And to show you how righteous God is, even though he made it to himself, he made it known to us, and he didn't even have to. That's how righteous and good God is. The promise before he didn't have to tell us that he made that promise, but he did. And he is keeping that promise, mm -hmm. okay? But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, I will say. He has but has, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. Manifested
manifested his word through the preaching of the gospel, mm -hmm. the good news. Okay? He's, he's, he made it known. Mm -hmm. He didn't keep that a secret. Okay? And so when we, when we think about uh, the preaching of his gospel, it gives us in that, in that gospel that good news about Jesus Christ and it shows us what he expects of us um, how to live how to, we are to deal with uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ how we're supposed to deal with the world how we are to handle troubles okay lets us know that we are to pray sometimes we got to fast Okay? that he desires worship, true worship, okay? and all of that comes through uh, the gospel uh, of his preaching. Okay? And so that's in the first part of our lesson. Then we move on to after now. He has Titus set up. He's left it, leaving him so that he can go on and keep ministering, but now Titus has the responsibility uh, and charge of this church. Okay? And so in, when you read uh, the scriptures in between from 1-4 up to 2-10, uh, he's given Titus some instructions. Okay? And that's the beauty of, one of the beauties of serving God. Uh, <clears throat> he didn't leave it. He didn't call us into this service and then leave it for us to figure out what we have to do. He left it on record for us. Mm -hmm. And if we would just follow the directions, mm -hmm. we would do a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. But the problem comes in is when we want to go off script. Mm -hmm. I remember I pastoring in Milwaukee, and <clears throat> I had been uh, preaching. Sister Young, tithes and offering. I had been preaching it, because that's what the Bible, tithes and offering. And <clears throat> one of the deacons came to me one Sunday, and said, Pastor, talk to you for just a minute. I got a plan of how we can get more money in the church. And so I said, yeah, okay. Let me know what you got. And so he went on to explain to me his plan or how to get more money in the church and God wasn't nowhere in it. Mm. God wasn't nowhere in it. <laughs> and so I said, well, what about tithes and offerings? There was no response. And said, you know, if this were an organization or a club, mm -hmm. that might work out. Mm -hmm. But this is God's church, and God has already given the financial plan. Mm -hmm. And so if we just follow God's financial plan, mm -hmm. guess what? Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry mm -hmm. uh, about you coming up with this plan from yeah. wherever to try and get more money in the church. Okay? So, um, if we stay on script with God, mm -hmm. God is going to work it out for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what we have to do. All right, so the next part we have in here, um, Starts with 2.11. Okay? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation 
hath appeared to all men. The grace of God. The grace of God. Okay? What is grace? Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Undeserving favor. Undeserving. And, and <clears throat> we don't deserve it, but what happens? He gives it to us anyway. Man, I messed up yeah. on yesterday. Okay? I know I don't deserve to be here. But what happened? Grace, Grace. allowed me another chance. Okay? So, the favor of God, the favor of God, That song, I love, I love that song. God has smiled on me. His favor. His favor yeah. has smiled on me and given me another chance. And what you going to do with that other chance? Prayerfully, you're going to do better. We're going to do better than we did on yesterday. Okay? Have appeared to all men. <clears throat> Grace is available to all of those who will repent and accept Jesus as their Savior. It's available. All you have to do is accept him. And once you accept him, all of those benefits become available to you as well. Uh, to all men. Now, what is grace going to do? When we look at this lesson, what is grace going to do? Bring salvation. First thing is going to bring salvation. It's going to bring salvation. Who in here don't need salvation? Okay, that's what I thought. Uh -huh. <laughs> All of us need salvation. Uh -huh. All of us. So that big word salvation simply mean, it means we need deliverance from sin. Okay? We need deliverance from sin. What about sin? What do we need deliverance from sin? We need deliverance from the power of sin. We need deliverance from the penalty of sin. And we need deliverance from the presence of sin. Okay? And so right now, when we come to Christ, we are being delivered from the penalty. Because what does the Bible say uh, the wages of sin is? Yeah. Okay? We're being delivered from the penalty of sin. That's when we first come to Christ, from the penalty. Okay, and so grace then gave us another chance. And so now, as a child of God, what is God working on doing for us now with sin? He's delivering us from the power of sin. And kid yourself not, sin has power. Because if it didn't have power, you, we wouldn't keep doing it. Okay? And so once I get eternal life, what is he delivering me from then? I'm delivered from the presence of sin. Okay? Penalty, power, presence, salvation. Okay? That's one thing that grace is doing for us. And then, what's the next thing? Grace makes salvation appear to all men. All of them have the opportunity for salvation. Some just flat out reject it because they think they're God. 
Anytime you can cross out on the Bible, Holy Bible, and put your name, you think you go. Okay? And then you have some that are of the mentality of a grip. Hmm. Almost. You got some, and it, it really ain't no such thing as it, but you know, a gripper made it sound good. Almost. Thou persuaded me. Ain't no such thing as an almost Christian. You either. <laughs> That's simple as that. Okay? A lot of folks done ended up on the wrong side almost. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. No such thing as an almost. And then the last thing that I saw that grace does, it teaches us. It teaches us about God, Jesus Christ, all that they have to offer us. Okay? Grace is the favor of God that he extends to us. None of us deserve it. But it's what he offers us. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so whenever we talk about grace, some folks ought to just be yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me finish this up real quick. Uh, it teaches you, uh, it teaches us in here. Um, what does it say? I mean, verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Okay? So now, if you look over, um, y'all got that book for it. If you look over where it has the uh, children lesson, it breaks it down real good for you. Verse 12. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Not in the world to come, because in the world to come, you ain't, if you make it to heaven, you ain't got no choice. There was only one. There you go. <laughs> there was only one that thought he could do uh, better than God, and God had to show him, no, this is my house. <laughs> and, and kicked him out. That's right. Okay. He wants us to live godly lives in this life. Okay. And, and living a godly life it's going to take some work. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do a whole lot of praying. We're going to have to do some fasting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's going to take some work. But the beauty of it is we can do it by the grace of God. Amen. That's right. That's right. And the Holy Spirit is there. He, he, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. In other words, I, I, I'm not going to leave you helpless. Mm -hmm. I got somebody that can be with everybody at the same time. And he won't get your situation mixed up with another person's situation. That's right. And so we have all of that to help us live that life in this world. Okay? while we wait for the blessed hope of the appearing of the glory of the great God. Okay? That's what we're waiting on. Okay? That's what we're working for. That's what we shed tears for. That's what we go through struggles for. That's what we endure the storms for. Because I'm waiting. I know. He promised me. One of these days, this fight, will be over, and I'll go home to get my reward. Okay. 
Any questions, comments? All right. Ms. Lou, I'm through. Okay.